And as our men come to kneel here at the front, our men on the platform kneel, may we bow our heads and our hearts in prayer. And we'll be led in just a moment by Mr. Mark Cutrell, who of late has been selecting persons for our building program testimonies, and he's done such an excellent job. Mr. Mark Cutrell. Our Father, we thank you for Jesus this morning. We're here to pray to honor him, to worship him. Be with us as we sing, as we study your word, that all might be done to glorify his name. And Father, in terms of service, we ask that your spirit might be with us as we make our commitments of these days toward your building program in this place. May he inspire us, Lord, to do even above and beyond anything that we personally think is possible that you might be glorified by it. We pray that you'd be with our pastor this morning as he breaks the bread of life to each one of us. If there are lost in this auditorium this morning, may something that's said or done, may the moving of your spirit bring that lost one to salvation. And may we be privileged to see that person walk the aisle. Lord, we thank you for our seniors. We thank you for the dedication of their life as they complete this mile post. We thank you, Lord, that they've done a good job. They've fought a good fight thus far in honor of your name. Be with us in all things now, Father, today, that your church might be built up and Jesus might be magnified. And we'll give you the praise in his name. And for his sake, amen. And now for your worship, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the clarion bell ringers under the direction of Mr. Tommy Brinkley.
Thank you, Tommy Brinkley and our clarion bell ringers. At this time, I'd like to ring another kind of a bell, and that is a triumphant bell because I have a special presentation to make. Pastor, would you step to the front? I have here a pledge card, which is a total of the pledges from our children's choirs under the direction of Miss Betty Bedsole and our clarion choir, who you see here. And I'm not sure exactly how the children choirs, how they get their money, but I know that represented here is an awful lot of mowing lawns and babysitting and things like that because I'm pleased to present a total to you from these two groups of more than $11,000. Dear me. Am I surprised? $11,374.92. I can understand the 92 cents, but where'd that $11,000 come from? <laughs> Man, thank you. That's just glorious. I'm so surprised. I'm so happy. David, God love you. <laughs> How many of you last night were out late and you saw the lunar eclipse? Then why are you here so early this morning? <laughs> there was a lunar eclipse last night, which was done, which was produced by the sun being halfway around the earth, and the earth's shadow is on the moon. We're told in scripture that no matter where the sun may be, whether it's shining on us or clear around the world, that one day Christ is going to be honored wherever that is. Could we sing a hymn that speaks of that? Number 142, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun may be. We'll Sing in a moment the first and the second stanzas. Number 142.
all of us, especially here in this sanctuary today, can see the wonderful reward God has given us in the investment we have made in these young people. And especially, particularly at this moment in our music program. It's just unbelievable the spirit of worship and devotion and love for God and the church that you find in these boys and girls. And think of what it means for the chapel choir when they're promoted into that older group of teenagers. And finally, in the sanctuary choir, when they're grown and begin singing with us in the very prime of their life. That's why we're asking our people to help us build this new building so that they can have a place to meet and to practice and to robe and to prepare for this glorious praise of God when they come into the service. We welcome you who have joined us on radio. You're sharing the services, the First Baptist Church in Dallas. And this is the pastor bringing the message entitled, The Shoulders of Jesus. Something great and wonderful is happening in our First Baptist Church services. May we worship this morning together by singing a hymn, hymn number 44. Would you take your hymn book and turn to it, and we'll sing together the hymn of grace, the hymn of praise, and can it be that I should gain. Amazing love, how can it be? We'll sing together the first and the third stanzas of hymn number 44.
that's a beautiful song. This is our clarion choir, our younger teenagers. And we're grateful to David Sinclair in working with them. On the radio of the city of Dallas and on KCBI, you are sharing the services of the First Baptist Church. And this is the pastor bringing the message entitled... We have now a special treat. A men's quartet comes to sing about entering into an experience with Christ by faith. Men, you come and sing. with majesty though he ruleth over land and sea and all the people said Amen. thank you men for a wonderful message in song note on the back page of your Sunday reminder the emphases for the week You'll observe there the information concerning the Royal Ambassador Day at Dallas Baptist College. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Number 378, would you turn to it? And we'll sing all the stanzas of this hymn, but I'm just wondering, could we do something just a little bit different tonight? Let's all sing together the first stanza, but on the second, may we have just our ladies sing on the second, and then on the third, all our men, and then on the fourth, everybody together again okay number 378 and since it's stand up for jesus wouldn't you like to just remain seated where you are <laughs> here we go
you for your sink. Thank you for your sink. Thank you, David. At least you got somebody's attention by almost having a stand. Didn't he, Dr. Draper? <laughs> we welcome you to our First Baptist Church in Dallas tonight. We're delighted to have you. And I know you sound like you are happy to be here as you've shared in the singing tonight and in the, the service thus far. Now may we sing again. Would you turn to 181? Onward, Christian soldiers, by faith under his banner. We will stand in a moment and sing the first, the second, and the last stanzas of hymn number 181. All right, together. Maybe. And in this moment, would you remain standing? We bow to bless God's tithes and offerings. Our men on the platform kneel. And we'll be led in this prayer by our minister to college and career young people, Tom Gowan. Heavenly Father, we come into your throne room with boldness because of Jesus Christ, your precious Son.
Thank you, choir. That would really have been nice with the orchestra. <laughs> I had some drums at the first, but someone even pulled them off. But choir, you did good, handicapped as you were. It's a wonderful song. The fight is on, oh, Christian soldier, but it's not our fight, it's his. And that's why we can be optimistic, because we can have faith that God is going to see us through. Tonight, we're looking at the fourth in a series of five messages from the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the faith chapter. And I tell you, if you want to get up a real good happy, really be encouraged, just sit down and read this 11th chapter every day. <laughs> Wonderful blessing, Leroy, and I appreciate what you did for me and my life in that. But the third part that we'll recognize tonight in the building is what you saw right here tonight. It's for our kids. You see, the backbone of our ministry in this church is our teaching. Now, we have these others, and we thank God for the blessings in them, but it's the teaching. We teach them God from the youngest right on up. Last year, Dallas was able to share in the Southern Baptist Convention being hosted here. On the Sunday night before, they had the commissioning service of the Southern Baptist missionaries. They allowed just a short time for each of the missionaries to come and tell of God's purpose in their life and their experience of salvation. And almost each one of them, each and every one, as they said a word, they first came to know God from the youngest time in the church. We see that in our church, the missionaries that have gone out. They receive the seed. The seed is planted in the youngest ages. We see that in our workers across our convention, whether it's the church workers here, whether it's in the denominational life, they come to know God. That seed is planted in the youngest ages. We'll see in just a few weeks the ordination services of our new deacons. And at these ordination services, they're given the opportunity to tell what God is in their life and where they first came to know God. And you'll find, if you witness this, that in that they again tell that they first met, the majority of them will know Christ with their parents from the very beginning, bring them to the nursery and the beginners in the primary, and we thank God for this. You know, what we teach in these younger ages the theology is simple, but the message is powerful. Jesus loves you. And it's a very powerful thing that we'd say to each one of them. I've mentioned just in brief some of the testimonies of older people or those who are entering into life's work, and they tell about it. But how do I know this is real today in our young people? I have a daughter who sang tonight.